Hey everyone, back again. Welcome back to another video review. This time everyone, we are going to be taking a look at a, well, a much anticipated special, which I kind of I meant to do earlier, a few months ago, but due to complications and other reasons, uh, that didn't happen until now. This time everyone, we are going to be taking a look at the much anticipated Thomas Friends special, which is Big World Big Adventures. Wow, what can I say? So basically, it um, starts up pretty generic. We have, we're, we're already introduced to our new character right out of the bat, that's Ace, he's a rally car. And, oh my god, he is such a crazy character, but until the, near the, near the final act, which really, really just, really kicked me in the chest. For, I'll get to that. But basically, he, he meets Flying Scotsman, first off, and he just drives across the bridge to Vickerstown. He almost kills Sydney upon impact. And he meets up with Thomas and convinces him to be the first railway engine to go around the world. But when he meets up with Thomas and at Farquhar. The aforementioned Thomas pulls a silly trick on Gordon, which is hilarious, puts some sticky fish trucks at the back of the express, which infuriates Gordon, and nearly makes Flying Scotsman lose his lunch which I thought that was hilarious. Um, and then after suggesting said idea to Sir Top of Hat, Thomas just interprets the fact, which uh, he, he leaves any, Thomas leaves any clever on the signing, which, which leaves Carly to load Thomas onto his ship destined for Africa. And, or India. But basically, that's what Sir John had plays the cat and mouse game. He gets onto the same ship to Dakar. Um, <laughs> thanks to like Carly, Carly literally loads <laughs> Sir Tapo had into the ship. <laughs> oh my god, which was hilarious. Um, he, and it happens again in the same act and later on in the film. But anyways, um, and basically Thomas is when he gets there. He and Ace meet up, and Ace basically, he goes on this, like, because he's a part of this, like, rally championship that goes around five continents and five different parts of the world. So basically, what they, he meets up with these other rally cars, which, uh, I believe, yeah, Tony and, Tony is one of them. I remember his, one of them is named Tony, the other ones I can't remember the line from me. Um, but basically, um, Ace just does his thing. He just r races about. Thomas, meanwhile, is taking these these troublesome trucks. Well, not troublesome trucks, but these these trucks are so polite, unlike the Sodor trucks. And basically, he um, every stop he has to stop like at various points to pick up trucks, the trucks, the trucks. And what happens is that's where we're introduced to Nia. And Nia is an orange tank engine. She's pretty. She's pretty clever. She's pretty awesome. And and basically, Thomas like is just like repeatedly saying, you know, I don't need your help. You know, he see he feels the confidence to do things by himself. You know, because he and this is where like Nia just basically tags along despite the protests uh, because you know Nia's trying to help. And then they reach their destination. And that's when we're introduced to Quaku. Quaku is a Garrett engine, and oh my God, I love Quaku so much. Um, deep, deep Indian-based accent, and this is the f technically the second Sodor-based uh, Garrett. No, so technically the second Garrett we've had in Thomas the Tank Engine, because the first one we had was the Sodor Workshops Garrett that was made for trains, which was never in the TV series before Quaku. Oh, I would love to see an episode in Trains with the, 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 the Sodor Garrett comprised of three personalities against Quaku, which is just a singular Garrett, which I thought was going to be... I honestly thought that like Quaku was going to be a comprised mixture, much like the Sodor Garrett from Sodor Workshops. That's what I thought, but like I said, Quaku was pretty cool. So then they meet Quaku, and then they drop off the trucks, and, and then they go to China. And that's when Ace is already there, and basically just, well, yeah, just, 
basically repeating the message, free and easy, free and easy. Thomas is going along with it. And then, meanwhile, Sir Tom is trying to find Thomas. No one doesn't have a bloody clue who he is to begin with. His actual top hat gets eaten by a camel, and he, every time he goes to destination, he gets replaced with different types of hats, which is which is bloody hilarious. Um, and essentially from there, um, like, that's when Sir Tom meets gets picked up again by a different crane, and it's a red crane, and it's a similar basis to Big Mickey, because some of these engines have a re, re skins and recolors of engines that have already been introduced or have recurred or have had starring roles. Um, um, so yeah, basically that's what happens there. And then what happens is when they get to the Amazon, Thomas and Nia are, are expected to take some coffee from there to San Francisco, some coffee beans. They find Ace, who has crashed in the race, has, you know, damage and stuff. He gets a little bit onto, one, onto his train. And, however, sorry about that. However, um, they they get kind of thunderstorm. It causes the this, this ground to get weakened and the bridge to basically collapse. So, some references there. A nice reference to the washout from the railway series, which is pretty cool. Um, and basically from there, um, they escape the Amazon, and this is where it gets really, really finicky, because they get head over to the Salt, Salt Lake Flats. That's where Ace wants to go, but Nia is, is arguing that they need to get the coffee to San Francisco. That's true, however, Ace's manipulation causes the most heartbreaking yet idiotic part of the film. Ace manipulates Thomas to just basically ditch Nia, race her, and just, just go to the Salt Lake Flats, which ends up causing Thomas to derail, ride the Grand Canyons, um, nearly crashes into Bo, which is the next new character that we're introduced, and then they eventually crash on the other side of the of the canyon. Like, everyone derails. And I'm like, God, God damn it, Ace. You're an asshole. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, anyways. So, basically what happens is, Bo sees this. He comes back to the site, and Thomas is asking for the breakdown train, but Bo doesn't know what the breakdown train is. Um, basically, he just leaves them there, and... Leaves them there for dead. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Though that, just imagine that happening. Anyways, uh, so basically they are left there for the night. And then the next day, they they put them back in the rails the old-fashioned way. They get you know horses and and I beam supports, and they are able to re-rail Thomas and get Ace back on his on his wheels. Um, and after Thomas drops off Ace at the Salt Lake Flats, he resumes his journey to f uh, well after he drops off the coffee. He goes and knocks to find Nia. And, and actually we're introduced, I mean, go back to Bo. Bo is so funny. He is a nice little engine. He's so, he's so amazing. He, he, he's, you know, Western, you know, all, all like, you know, cowboy kind of personality. It was pretty cool. I love that. Um, when Thomas arrives, he meets this diesel engine named Natalie. And Natalie's pretty cool. Um, very soft-spoken voice, very, very cool, very cool. Sir Tom Matt, meanwhile, you know, after Thomas leaves, you know, leaves from San Francisco to going, you know, to find Nia, you know, you know, because Sir Tom Matt finds Natalie and asks where, where Thomas is, and Tom Matt is just like, he's not frustrated, he's just like depressed. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> He, like, he gets the short end of the straw throughout this special. I'm sorry, from from the moment he loses his top hat to the moment he... at the end, which I think... Anyway, I'll get to that. But basically, yeah. And... <sighs> Thomas, like, he meets up with this crane, which is the same basis as Beresford from Jerry Beyond Sodor, but he's green and has a very 
giant ass face. <laughs> Anyways, um, so he gets loaded into a ship, bound for, bound for, basically for Hong Kong and such. Uh, yeah, basically another part, and then that's where Thomas, and that's when we get to see Yon Bao. Yon Bao is amazing. We have well, first time we've seen him since the Great Race. And first time we've seen him since my video review of his Thomas Wood figure, which was epic. And no, I've not bought any new Thomas Wood figures since Down Bow. Um, just, you know, so. Anyways, basically, um, in a whole nutshell, Yum Bao is like wondering why is Thomas here. He explains what's going on. And then he goes to, you know, the Rainbow Mountains um, to find Nia. And this is where the part, this is like where the climax is. So basically, you know, Dia knew about this and she's like absolutely cross with Thomas. And then Thomas explains what the reason, you know, the truth behind everything. And then the avalanche, because of Thomas's, you know, is just, Thomas is shouting to, to Nia, but the sound waves tr trigger an avalanche, which, which causes Nia to derail. She almost gets killed. So Thomas decides to chain, like, has a chain, so they basically attach a chain to Nia's back end. And Thomas tries to, you know, pull Nia to safety, but then, when all hope is lost, Yan Bao comes to the rescue and saves everyone. And that is just magnifique right there. Just magnificent. Um, and basically, at the end of it all, Nia and Thomas head back to Sodor together. There's a welcome home party. Gordon forgives Thomas for all the teasing in the in the beginning of the film. Because he's trying to move like some tankers and he derails them. And then Sir Topamat and Ace are stuck on the same ship wondering where Thomas is. And that's the end of the special, in a nutshell. It was just epic. It was just just pure epicness. Um I loved it. It was just incredible. The soundtrack was pretty moving, like, because, I mean, we go from, you know, the epicness of, and the most, like, <laughs> you know, the worry, like, the, of where in the world is Thomas, to the, you know, the most epic soundtrack, free and easy, to, so, and to Sometimes You Make a Friend, Sometimes You Make a Friend really touched me, because it, it relates to me in a way. I'm not going to go into the details, but yeah, it really, really sent a powerful message right there. Because you know, Thomas felt really guilty doing that. It wasn't his fault. Ace was responsible for it, and he should have gotten more of what he deserved. He should have at least, at least, I don't know, at least, I don't know. Couldn't they just like, I don't know. <laughs> had Ace on a friggin' like jetty towed by the friggin' ship as punishment? Then maybe having maybe banished to Missy Island Rescue as punishment? I don't know. But Ace was a pretty cool character, despite all that. Um colorful per colorful personality, his friends were pretty cool. His rally car rally car mates. Quaker was epic, as I mentioned, which was pretty nice. Bo was just classic epicness. I loved Bo, it was pretty sick. Um, Natalie was pretty amazing. I loved her color scheme and her basis is similar to Frankie's. Well, not really, but I find it similar. Um, and then we got a lot of cameos and a little dialogue from the great race characters, especially Sam. Sam! The, the, the American Tender Engine from that little short there back in a few years ago. That was epic. I love that little moment there. Um, Nia was pretty epic. I mean, I could almost relate Nia and Thomas to Thomas and Ashima. Oh, just imagine the episode of... <laughs> Thomas is just such a lucky tank engine. Really is. With all the amazing people he has, especially with myself and my personal life, but... Anyways, um... Yeah, it was an epic special, and poor Sir Top of Hat. I'm really sorry. Sir Top of Hat, the Fat Controller. Just goes through too much just humiliation and ends up like on a ship at the end. And of course, this is like, you know, of course, con they're going to continue the theme in season 22. Yes, the season 22 has been released, 
there's a ton of there's a, there's a lot of episodes. So and by this by the end of it, Mr. Percival's end up in, ends up in charge of everything, which I think is very suing. Imagine like like I mean it would be cool if they I don't know added Mr. Star, Mr. Zorro in, at the end. I think it would have been kind of nice to see. Yes, I know the characters in Victor Tanzig's universe. But I think it would be kind of nice, nice, neat to see. It'd be a nice little crossover. Maybe Victor Tansy could do that in his special, in his series, or maybe myself. Who knows? Maybe the, the the lengths of I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. But anyways, all in all, it was an epic special, pretty incredible, pretty moving, pretty epic. Shows the meaning of of truth and honesty and caring and politeness and just just down to earth, you know. Because as someone who is in a relationship, you know, it really meant a lot to me, personally. It really did. And I sure hope my other half will think the same. But anyways, that's another story. Anyways, guys, that is my video review of Big World Big Adventures, a quite an epic special. I will see you all very soon. I will be back as soon as possible with my next video, and yes. So take care, everyone. See you soon. Have a good day, and I shall catch you all later. Bye-bye.